Hey guys, welcome to Sunday Driver Cinema. I'm Emma. And I'm Rachel, and this is our second attempt at a podcast. Yes, ma'am. So, you guys may have um, not heard about our first podcast, <laughs> and it was called The Top of the Fridge. We didn't really have a topic. Um, we thought... <laughs> we didn't have our... any listeners either. No. Our biggest, our biggest um, hit was like 26 views. Very proud of that one. <laughs> one comment, but we couldn't see it um, because we deleted all the videos. So maybe if this one gets big, we will review one of our old podcasts. That might be fun. That might be horrible. Yeah, because I was really annoying back then. Like, I'm still probably annoying now. And I don't know. We have a concept now. We're here. We're, We're here. Reviewing movies? Yes. And we'll just let you know we have no credentials at all to be reviewing movies. My but... my credentials are as follows. I okay. have seen a movie before. Yes. I can form opinions at yes. this point. And um, that's about it. Yeah, same. Um, also, just t- to brag a little bit, Miss Rachel, she's going into film school at the moment. We don't know what's going to happen. Haven't but... started yet. Yeah. What will happen. Yeah. I'm not going to do environmental studies. Um, but, you know, that's a little bit about us. Yeah. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So the first movie we have this week is called Frank. It came mm-hmm. out in 2014, directed by Lenny Abrahamson. It's an hour and a half long. It's got an R rating for uh, language and... Um, so, yeah, we should probably mention like a trigger warning kind of thing. Um, there's language. Images of suicide. Yeah. I believe that's just, that's the main thing. Yeah. There is some violence as well. (laughs) Yes. Yes. A little bit. So not a movie for children, but. No. Um, it was originally released in the UK. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's got Michael Fassbender and Maggie Gyllenhaal, as well as Domhnall Gleeson as some of the main characters. Yeah. And it was released in the UK mainly because it's based off of this comedian UK personality, Frank Sidebottom, um, who is, like, created by Chris Seavey. And this really, like, influences the movie a lot because, I guess we'll just, like, start going. It's heavily inspired by him. So, the movie is about... A band. Mm-hmm. The lead singer is Frank, and his whole thing is he wears this giant paper mache head. Yeah, the whole time he never takes it off, except maybe he does. <laughs> At the <laughs> end. Um, so it starts off with John, mm-hmm. who ends up being their keyboardist. But in the beginning, he's kind of a nobody. He yeah. um, is trying to make it in the music world, but he's struggling a lot by himself. Yeah, he doesn't know really how to, like, properly write a song, because he's good at playing, like, piano and keyboard, which helps him get into, you know, the band. Um, but he's, yeah, struggling musician, until <laughs> he meets Don! Yes, yeah. he's um, walking along the beach, and he sees the band, like, stopped at the beach with some police? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's two um, police. Their keyboardist is going through it, um... As all their keyboardists seem to do, go through it. Um, so they're looking for a new one. <laughs> and um, their producer, manager? Don. Yes. Don invites John <laughs> to um, play the keyboard at their gig that night because they need one. Yes. And John is like, okay, yeah. Like, yeah, I'll let's go. It. So he shows up that night and... It's it's going well for a minute, and, and then, then it, and then it doesn't. No, yeah. <laughs> um, it's I don't remember exactly what happens. There's like a fight that breaks out between Maggie's character Clara, um, and Frank. They start fighting, mm-hmm. or it maybe the background actors. Yeah. So the band. It's, <laughs> the, lead it's singer, interesting. the lead singer is Frank, as we've mentioned. Yeah. There's John, who joins them as their keyboardist. There is Clara, who... She plays she, the... She plays her the, own instrument. Yeah. She builds them. She plays them herself. 
Yeah, they talented lady. Interesting sounds. And then we've got a couple of French people as uh-huh. the drummer and guitarist. Yes. Um, and the kind of music they play is synth pop. I think we decided on yeah, like alternative. It's, it's pop. very niche. Yes. It's it's not for everybody. It's for them. <laughs> they like it, so they listen to it. It's very oh, what's the word? Con- <laughs> not controversial. What's it called? Contemporary. Yes. That yeah, it's like contemporary music. It's a lot of like <clears throat> like that's what it sounds like. Um yeah. So the plot of the movie is <clears throat> that they're trying to record a new album mm-hmm. with their new keyboardist John, and they go to this cabin in the woods to write an album they're not leaving until the album is written yeah which is Um, a surprise to john so (laughs) he originally thinks they're going for the weekend yeah they're i think they spend like a year there um but the movie's really not about that it's really more about the characters in the band Mm -hmm. um because they're all different they all have interesting stories of their own Mm mm-hmm they're all very dysfunctional, obviously. Yes. There's a lot of chaos that goes in this band. And a lot of them struggle with, like, mental illness. Hence the suicide part, which comes a little later. Um, and the other ones are just kind of controlling. Like, Clara's kind of controlling over Frank. Because he she knows that he has, like, a mental illness. Mm-hmm. And um, doesn't want other people to, like, hurt him. And then the French people are just French. They're just... <laughs> <laughs> That's their dysfunctionality. Um, no, I'm kidding. I love French. Oh, français. <laughs> love French people. Um, but yes, they're very dysfunctional. But they somehow make it work for a year, and all is good. And all is well. They're playing, mm-hmm. I believe, like twelve hours a day of music in mm-hmm. contemporary music. So their whole lives are writing this album. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. They eventually do. Yeah. They eventually do record an album. Um, Frank loves it. He thinks it's like his masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And while this is all going on, John is like tweeting and, um, and recording, recording them. Them posting the, um, their like behind the scenes stuff to YouTube, but he doesn't tell anybody. Yeah. And Cheeky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> when um, they do find out, they're none of them are really excited about it. They're all kind of like, why did, why did you do that? Yeah. Um, most of them aren't in the band to get famous. Mm-hmm. They're all really there to just make music and express themselves. Um, but John really wants to get get the band out there. Yeah. And I think a main part of this, um, while they're there, they run out of money, so they use a lot of John's money. So mm-hmm. he's put a lot of time and effort into this. Mm-hmm. And this isn't, like, his life. This is just, like, a side project of his, kind of. In the beginning. In the beginning. But it ends up being... <sighs> yeah. Yeah. His whole existence. Yeah. Um, but he eventually gets them to this music festival. Mm-hmm. South by Southwest, which is in Texas. And none of no one else in the band wants to go, but John really pushes Frank, who makes all the decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, and he convinces them to go. And Clara's really against it. Um, yeah. But she follows them anyways. They, oh, sorry, go. What were you oh, I was like, they all go and hate it. Well, like, also, John is like feeding Frank, like, oh, these people love you, like, everyone loves you, and like, there's gonna be a ton of people there that love you, but in reality, it's like 20,000 views, which is still like a decent amount. It's just, you know, when they get there, they find yeah. out they're not as famous, famous as they mm-hmm. had originally thought. Um, which makes sense, you know, they were by themselves in the woods for a year. Yeah. So, like... Yeah. But, then, the shit kind of hits the fan. That's, this is when... It it goes just as bad as you think it would. Yes. (laughs) Maybe worse. Yeah. Um, people get stabbed. Yeah. People get stabbed. The band, the band Memories get made. Um, and we're getting into climax territory, so if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it really good come back let us or come back listen to us talk about the ending so so and now the kind of like climax like breaking point is the bl- the band is all split up now 
And I, I don't know if we mentioned this. Don had committed suicide. I think we did a little at this up. point. Yeah, yeah, at this point, um, back in Ireland, which is in the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, so now it's just Frank and John, and you know, Frank is going through it. So is <laughs> they've, John. They've left the music festival at this point. I yeah. think it's still going on. They just ditched. Yeah. Um, they're in this motel and, um. John does, in fact, try to get Frank to take off the head. Yeah. Um, the whole time you're wondering, like, what does he look like under there? Why does he really have it on? And we're kind of getting to this point of, like, figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but Frank absolutely does not want that to happen. And so he tries to run away. Um, Gets hit by a car. And it, it, <laughs> it uh, breaks off his head. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he somehow manages to run away without anyone seeing him yeah which i thought was like a superhero like super fast speedy (laughs) turns out he's uh really fast yeah he is michael fassbender so it's in his (laughs) name (laughs) but so he speeds off no one knows where the hell he is and john John... spends a while i think yeah looking to find him Mm -hmm. um but he ends up finding Clara and the other bandmates mm-hmm. in New Mexico, I believe. Don't know how they got there. Don't know. Nope. Because he found... the music festival was in Texas. Yeah. I guess they just went. Yes. <laughs> he, I think he found, or, well, I know how he found them. Because it was through a newspaper. Because mm, yeah. they have a very obscure band name. Don't know if we mentioned this. It's called Spurrer. 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 Probably should have mentioned the band name earlier. It is... <laughs> It's not a huge um, thing in the movie. You kind of don't yeah. really think about it at all. No, when they I when they even like showed it on like the sign for the poster, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that's a poster. <laughs> I didn't realize when it, it was, was like a band. When it was written on the side of the van in the beginning, I didn't even think of it as a band name. I thought they <laughs> that just, was just like the van. Yeah, I thought someone just put it there. Yeah, um, and I think that's made for a reason. It's very like unrecognizable, mm-hmm. like unsearchable. Just like their music, <laughs> it, it matches. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so, we did we did some I don't know research on the name mm-hmm. after we watched the movie and it was really interesting. It was apparently written with different spellings all throughout the script. Yeah, there's no there and there's no like correct pronunciation of it. There's no vowels. There's no vowels. Although, None in sight. When when you search it on Spotify, there's a um, couple of vowels in the beginning. I think just to make it more searchable, mm-hmm. there's Spotify. so people can find mm-hmm. it easier. Um, but yeah, there's no correct way to pronounce it. You just kind of say it. You say spur, fritter. Spur, fritter. And it's all right. It's all correct. I kind of yeah. love that part about it, Yeah, though. no, I love that. Yeah. It's very obscure and, and very... unique, just like this movie. Yes, of course. But he finds them because in the newspaper, it's like, bars, weekly band, burn it, Like, it's like, 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 oh, yeah. very similar. I know that. Like, we know her. Okay. And he goes and he sees them and he's like, where's Frank? And they're like, I don't know, fuck off. And he's like, okay. And then he remembers Don, I believe, telling him. Um, oh, I thought he took to Twitter and was like, hey guys, you know where Frank is? And then he got, <gasps> a, right. he got a bunch of like people trying to help him figure it You're out. Right. Yeah. And someone was like, hey, look in Bluff City, Kansas. Yeah. Um, and they do mention that Frank is from Bluff City, Kansas. We also did some research on this. The um, last population. Yeah, the last time they did a census, the population was sixty-five people, <laughs> <laughs> not the average age. That's sixty-five people, and um, it was filmed. The whole movie was filmed just in Dublin and in New Mexico, so it's not actually in Kansas, which is offensive because we are proud. Kansans. <laughs> I really I really don't think they did any further research on Bluff City other than it's a small town that no one's ever heard of. Yeah. Um, so like everything about it's very Because obscure. there's no way they have like a public school there. No. 65 people? No. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Which is very frank. <laughs> but um, John goes there, finds Frank. He finds his parents' house, and yeah. he kind of, like, tries to get some answers out of them, and you're like, okay, here we go. We're finally going to get some answers why Frank is like this, like, what's up? And then they kind of just, all they really say is, well, he has mental illness. And that's yeah. kind of the whole conversation, which I thought was a bit disappointing, because, yeah. like, 
the whole thing is like what why does, yeah. i want answers i want to know things and mm-hmm. all they tell you is mental illness and it's like okay and explain for because john john went into it like really expecting them to like talk about like a traumatic childhood mm-hmm. and they're like no he, he was a yeah nice like, boy it's just they his... literally just were like no it's just it's just mental illness yeah which was very upsetting i think and it's upsetting to us and obviously john so we feel like his kind of yeah like we feel like we've been nervous. sitting here waiting for and then we get nothing yeah which mm-hmm. a bit disappointing i don't know I don't want to call the writers lazy. I don't think it's laziness. Because I think it's... There's a lot of yeah. other creative, good, funny ideas throughout the rest of the script. It's just this one part. Mm-hmm. Just... That you had issues with? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was like... I kind of like it in the sense that it's, like, really, like, simple and, like, mysterious. Because that's, like, this whole movie. It's like, yeah. you don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, I can see yeah. what you mean there. But... Yeah, he finds Frank, eventually. No paper mache head in sight. Mm, if yeah. you're wondering what he looks like, he just looks like Michael Fassbender. There's no... <laughs> no special effects, <laughs> nothing. There, there is some... Um, he's like a little bald. Like, he has bald spots yeah, because of the head, probably. Yeah, and there's like about. some, like, wounding around his forehead. Yeah. But other than that, he just looks like Michael Fassbender. And I thought... I thought Michael Fassbender did a great job acting as Frank. Like, I thought his, like, yeah. body language and, like, his voice was very well. Just the way Michael Fassbender looks does, was not what I thought Frank would look like. No. He was very, like, clean-shaven, too, I meant. I, like, thought he would be, like, kind of, like, disheveled yeah. looking. John definitely um, asked about how he, like, shaved and stuff. And we also didn't really get an answer for that. No, he asked, like, somebody in the room. I don't know. Like yeah, just like I think he was talking to Don himself. about it, and Don just kept being like, well, "He just he just does it." I don't know. Yeah, which the lack of explanation for some things in this movie, like <laughs> it bothers me. Like I, yeah, I want to know, and they just same. don't tell you. Yeah, they're just kind of like, "It is what it is." It is what it is. It reminds yeah. me of um, Coraline. This one, mm. this one part. Coraline's one of my favorite movies of all time. Like it's mm-hmm. it's so good. The only thing that bothers me about that movie is when Coraline goes to the other world and she sees the cat and he talks and she's like, "How can you talk?" And he says, "I just can." I hate that. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. I think that's like, like I have this thing about movies where I don't or like shows and I guess kind of everything in life, but it like relates to movies. I hate like endings and of shows and movies and whatever because i don't like that nothing is like answered like it's just kind yeah. of like it doesn't show us everything it's it's i think it's one thing if a movie doesn't explain something without like talking about it like they just kind of let things slide but it's like mm-hmm. another thing when the question is prominently asked and yeah they, and they just avoid so it bluntly just say it, it is what it is yeah it, it bothers me. I don't like it. Like, why would you write that in if you're not going to answer it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I all, all these questions that um, John is asking throughout the movie, you're also wondering. I feel like the writers could have just let John accept it without, like, actually asking them. You know what I mean? Mm, like, you think it would have been better if he just wouldn't have asked them at all? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, as, a, as the viewer, you still have all the questions... Um, but they're not bluntly just telling you, I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you're definitely, like, John is written through the perspective of, like, the viewer. Like, he's an outsider. Mm-hmm. And so are you to this, like, whole situation. Mm-hmm. You're like, what's going on? So, yeah. I think they tried to write it like that, where you're just like, what? Yeah. If that makes sense. You can, and then that way you can relate to John as, like, a yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I didn't like John that much. I mean, he was fine. <laughs> he was okay. I think the actor did a really good job, like, playing him. He's a ginger. I'm a ginger. Gotta stand up for my fellow gingers. <laughs> Love that. Um, But, yeah. I feel like he wasn't that exciting as a character because he was written for the perspective, or, or of the perspective of the viewer, 
which, like an outsider, which is like compared to them, you can eat anybody. Yeah, so exactly. When you try to make a character like that as vague as an audience, yeah, kind of kind of makes sense. But at the same time, the the star of the show is Frank. Yeah, it's all centered around him. It's just that John happens to be the main character, I guess. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. But let's explain the final part of the movie. So some, I think John takes Frank with him to New Mexico. Yes. Another they also thing, didn't explain that. Another thing, they travel so much. They go, yeah. they're in They're in Ireland. Uh-huh. They manage to get to Texas. And then somehow. the band goes to New Mexico. Frank somehow, with no money. And I think, he's like, I think he's like in his pajamas. He just, like, I don't know, runs, hitchhikes? Like, he gets yeah. to Kansas somehow. Maybe he calls his parents. That's what I was thinking. And then yeah. John gets to Kansas. They somehow get to New Mexico. They go all these places, mm-hmm. and they don't explain how mm-hmm. at any point. Mm-mm. Which, yeah. like, I guess is better than someone asking how they got there and not answering it. <laughs> yeah. But... I think they had, like, when writing this, they had really good ideas. And yeah. The, but, like, connecting just... them, I think, was sort of a problem. A I still stories. really like this movie. Yeah. And all. But, yeah, they had problems, I think, like, connecting events together. Yeah. In my including, humble opinion. Including financial situations, because... You get... They explain the one in the in Ireland, though. Yeah, how they use John's money, but... yeah. They give the impression that the band is broke. Mm-hmm. And eventually, John, like, not runs out of money, but is, like, losing money very quickly because he's not gaining any and he's paying for the cabin. Everything. And, and then they somehow travel across states. Which and is across, like, like, waters. <laughs> you know, like, an ocean. It's, it's not a, like, big problem. It's just, like, a little detail. I yeah. was like, oh, well, I don't want to bring. And then... Uh-huh. You know, I just kind of like left it. Accepted to movie it. magic. Yes, because that's not really super important. All the time when I was growing up, I would always ask questions like at movies. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. how'd she get there? Like yeah. how? And my dad's like, you just gotta suspend, dis, suspend disbelief or Sus- suspend suspend belief. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Uh, you, it was my memory. You think I would know how to say it? <laughs> but, um, yeah. But they eventually, Frank is in New Mexico, he re- reunites with Clara and the French people. And they just kind of ended at that, so mm-hmm. you can kind of... And John leaves. That's leave. a big part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. John, John left. Leaves. Which I think is good for the band and for him. Because yeah. John was not like them enough to survive with Yeah. Them. Like, yeah. he needed to go his own way. He was... They were too far out of reality for him to make like actual like connections with them mm-hmm. um because they've just been living this crazy lifestyle for so long yeah. and frank's just like a normal guy like we said he has an office job music was just like a hobby and did you I- say frank was normal did i say frank i meant john we're talking oh, sorry john here. we're talking john <laughs> mr john burrows or whatever uh, but yeah, I thought that was actually really good because it, it ends off on one of their songs, probably their best song, by I thought far. So. I thought so. By far, is their best song. I actually kind of like it now that I think about it. But... I, not gonna lie, I did add it to a playlist. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, also it just like makes me think of watching the movie, and the movie was enjoyable to watch. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. Um, um, as far as the way. The movie was filmed. Um, I liked it. I thought the cinematography in it was actually really. I didn't think there were cool. too many scenes that were like super special, but it wasn't at all bad. I just like the like simplicity of it. Of yeah, this. and I'm sure like if you're like an actual person that knows what's going on with movies <laughs> and not us, so if you're like experienced in any way, you would like see that there's like special things about it or there's like differences um but i thought it was like kind of like a simple beautiful way the way they Mm -hmm. filmed it and the way time lapsed i kind of like that because it just showed you like obviously in movies they're not going to show like the boring parts they just want like the action Mm -hmm. especially in a movie like this which isn't 
boring, but it's not, like, fast-paced, really. You need, like, the action to come through. Yeah, I feel like, though, there were parts... Not necessarily that this was bad, but, like, there were parts that were, like, slow and sad, and then it got to parts that were, like, a lot was happening at one time. (laughs) Yeah. And, like, two minutes, there would be, like, ten different things happening. And I don't think it was bad. It was just kind of like... It like was him a, getting stabbed. It, it was, was a roller like... coaster for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, Visually and emotionally. Yes. There's a lot going on. Yes. And then there wasn't. And then there yes. was again. So it's like... And then it ended. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind and of, then we you made this just... podcast and now we're talking about it. It's full <laughs> circle. Um, should we get into waiting? Final thoughts? Final thoughts. You want to go in, um, what's your favorite part? Oh, um, I think my favorite part was they're at South by Southwest and it's a, they're about to perform and it's just John and Frank at this time and then Frank comes out in the fucking dress and he looks terrifying and he said, let's fuck. And I was like, at first I was like, what? I thought they were like, like, have sex and then. But no. <laughs> and then I was like, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, so um, that part in the movie, funny. everyone in the band has left except for yeah. Frank and John, and they're about to perform at this music festival, just the two of them. Mm-hmm. And John is trying to hype up Frank, and Frank is like, okay, yeah, let me let me just go change real quick. And he puts on, like, mascara yeah. and lipstick on his paper mache head, <laughs> and then wears, like, a nice, like, silky dress. Um, and he did I it. I thought he looked good. <laughs> <laughs> um, he goes in. It takes about two seconds and comes back looking like that, which I thought was like funny. Oh, sorry. I, I, feel, like, <laughs> I feel like they maybe could have taken a few more minutes, but that might have just added nothing time. Yeah. You know, well, because we were talking about time of how like it doesn't really show how mm-hmm. like time moves. Yeah, like correctly. Yeah, correctly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a part of it because that's their own reality. Yeah, it's like a different universe almost. That sounds Frank's deep. Frank's world is a different world. Dude, I would love to be in his world. He seems like a cool guy. Do you remember when he... What? <laughs> I wasn't about to say anything. Oh, I thought you looked at me like I was crazy. But he, um, when he was chasing John with the shovel, yeah. that was cute. I wish I could have been there. <laughs> that was like fun. Um, yeah, so I actually I hadn't thought much about my favorite part, but I think my favorite part is at the end when uh, Frank comes back to the band and he doesn't have a head on. Yeah. And when uh, we said he never takes the head off, no one in the band had even seen him without it. And so they don't recognize him at first, but he walks up to them and stares at them for a while and eventually they do get it. And um, Claire is kind of like... She starts crying. She's like in shock because mm-hmm. she, I believe she claimed to love him. I think she did. I think she was in love with him. Yeah. Because she, like, wanted to protect him so much and, you know. Yeah. And she kind of, like, it's the first time she sees him without the head. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, really shocking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And. Definitely an interesting film. It's one of those movies that's, like. Wow, that like I'm never gonna see that in a movie again. No, it was very unique and very creative. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could have made that up if yeah. I tried. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the type of um, kind of movie I would like to make. Like, oh, this right? is different, right? But it's not bad, and it makes you think a lot. Like, it's one of those pieces of work that you like watch it and you're like, oh, that's fine. And then like and a then week you, like, goes by and you're like, about it wait more. a second, <laughs> you're like they were on to something here. Like, it's just something you think about pretty regularly, and, like, things just, like, remind you of it in everyday Mm -hmm. life, which I thought was really unique, and that's, I love when, like, you find something like that that's so creative and one of a kind. Yeah. So I really liked it in that There are so many, there are so many movies these days, and, yeah, this came out in 2014, but, like, even in this, like, century, um, a lot of movies are unoriginal or remakes. Oh, which is unoriginal, yeah. but and they cost like seventy five million dollars to mm-hmm. make, and they're like, like awful. It's it's unoriginal or it's a superhero movie, and that's kind of all all the. Do you not movies. like superhero movies? No, I do. They're just okay. There's just, there's just so many. I I agree. 
And like I think in the kids, they only hyped. keep making more because of how much money they're making. Yeah. Which is like, like, like that's out. great for you guys, but I want some new original content, and I think Frank could do that. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't work at Marvel. Give me something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's definitely, like, a good, I don't know, like, a break from regular from like shit that you see. Mainstream. Ooh, yeah, yes. Whatever. But we're not, we're not, like, normal girls. <laughs> we don't watch regular movies. We don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what the Avengers is. <laughs> um, but I think it's good. If I was to give it a rating out of ten, seven maybe, seven point five. Seven. I'm gonna give it a seven point six. That's my seven, <laughs> That's my final rating. I think it's. I think it was good. I, I enjoyed it. It was a really good one to start out with because there was a lot like with this podcast, um, a lot going into it and just I don't know. Very a lot unique. of a lot of um, room for com- acid commentary trips. and <laughs> <laughs> a lot of acid trips went into making that movie, which um, I appreciate. They definitely did drugs. That's what I wrote. I, like the first thing I wrote is like product of a bad acid trip, but in a good way, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I originally, right after seeing this movie, I originally gave it a six out of ten. Mm-hmm. Um, after talking, after thinking about it and talking about it a little bit, I think I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. Ooh. Because it's unique, yeah. it's different, it's it's fun, it's quirky. Um, <laughs> it's funny. It is funny, and like just their body language and like minimal things, I think make it really. And the funny. the characters are people you've never met before. Maybe like, John. I mean, you've met John before. You have. But the rest yeah. of them. He works at your grocery store. <laughs> He's a nice guy. He's asked you paper or plastic. <laughs> um, yes. But, yeah, there's just so many things left unexplained in this movie that I I couldn't give it a perfect score. Oh, no. You, you leave with so many questions. Yeah. And I think it's also a cool one to start out with. Because I, I, I don't know if we mentioned this. We got this movie at the dollar store. Um, so yes, it was a dollar. We paid a dollar to see this. Yes, Worth for it. them. Yeah, good <laughs> entertainment for a dollar. And then the next episode, we are going to do the Owen Ohio, which I don't think will be a 7.6 out of 10. No. It has Paul Rudd, the love of my life, and Danny DeVito, the, also the love of my life. Um, but I, I think it, it has just, potential. It's about sex. But we'll get to that next time. <laughs> yes, that'll be next episode, so watch so, out for that. If you made it this far into the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I really, you deserve an applause. Yes, you deserve an award. Just a participation <laughs> ribbon, though. We don't have the budget for more than that. We can give you a sticker. I have Mr. Roger themed stickers. You do? Yes. Did you get them? Mm, I don't know. I think I stole they them just from my grandma. Them. Not stole. Borrowed. <laughs> don't steal things from grandmas, kids. It's not nice. But thank you for sticking with us. Um, if you're thinking about checking out Frank, I would do it. I do recommend yeah. this movie. Yeah. You can find it at your local dollar store. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe. Or I think it's also on Amazon Prime. And Magnolia Productions is the... Um, company that made it so mm-hmm. i think they have it also it's not on netflix or hulu unfortunately no yeah but too quirky for them <laughs> <laughs> if you want to seek it out i think it is worth it yeah don't pirate kids unless it's your last result so <laughs> do it don't tell them to pirate fuck the movies. system no do <laughs> only do it on like big movies this one's like kind of an independent so don't do it on her but on big movies pirate Great advice. Thank We're going to leave you with that, guys. <laughs> okay. Bye. See you later. Have a good week. Have a great day. <laughs>